Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the sponsor session of Chip in the Fields uh, 2021. Uh, so at this session, we will present uh, talks given by our sponsors. So they have set up uh, interesting uh, subjects to discuss with uh, our audience of chip in the field, uh, as you have seen probably in the program. So in the program, we have a sequence of seven uh, presentations, and we will start with the, the first uh, speaker, which is uh, Wim Sawyer uh, from uh, Flanders Investment uh, and Trade. Uh, located in USA, uh, San, San Francisco area, and uh, he will talk about the semiconductor industry in the heart of Europe. So he, he is in the US, but he will speak for uh, Flanders, so in Belgium, that's part of Belgium. So uh, please uh, we'll take the floor for you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Schwartz. Uh, Flanders Investment and Trade is very excited to be part of this conference. Uh, we hope to be there physically next year. Um, and as economical diplomats, um, the role of me and my colleagues in our Sao Paulo office is to stimulate um, the relationship between Brazil and Belgium. And we strongly believe that uh, our joint passion for chip design is a perfect foundation uh, for uh, things to build upon between our two countries. So therefore, I would like to um, ask a moment of your time uh, to highlight some of the industry strengths we have in Europe concerning semiconductors, strengths that are converging in our highly internationalized and cross-border region of Flanders. And as a, a true ambassador of Flanders, Professor Swart himself has intimate knowledge of our region, but in this new age of restricted air travel, I'll start with some brief context, uh, context uh, for those among you that have not yet had the chance to uh, visit Belgium. So I'll start with a, a short map of Europe. Um, if you take a closer look, uh, you can see why we're considered the heart of Europe. Uh, the dark grey triangle is the country Belgium and the top yellow part of the triangle is the region of Flanders, something uh, more or less six and a half million people. Now, as a mid-sized country in, in uh, Europe, Belgium is highly and densely populated and it's highly hyper-connected to the neighboring countries, Germany, Netherlands, UK and France. Our uh, regional capital is Brussels. It is also the capital of our country, Belgium and is also the capital of Europe. And the European Union has its European Commission based out of Brussels. So that by itself uh, leads me to say, honestly, we are the heart of Europe. Um, and you might know us from all the political news resulting out of Brussels, um, but that's not all we have to offer. We're not only uh, a political capital of European Union, we're not only the geographical heart of Europe, but we also have a lot to offer on the technological side. And that is something that we uh, do not promote a lot, uh, hence our particip participation in this conference and our contribution uh, to the Chip in the Design conference. So enough with keeping a low profile uh, on high tech. Uh, the next couple of minutes, I like your time and I would like to show you um, how that on the economical and the technological sides were also the heart of Europe. And in the past few months, we have been able to change that perception. And if I move to the next slide, I'll, I'll select it, uh, two screenshots for you of recent press items uh, that shows you the, the position that we, that we have in Belgium when it comes down to two of the most pressing global issues at the moment uh, concerning high tech. The first issue is the, the, the shortage of vaccines, and the second issue is the shortage of uh, semiconductors. So in both these domains, uh, we play a role in providing a solution to the world. And when you look at the, the biggest vaccine production deal that has been made, it's uh, the European Union ordering 1.8 billion um, vaccine doses that are produced in Belgium. 
that's on the, the right side of the slide. You see a screenshot there of the European uh, president of the commission visiting Flanders and the Pfizer production sites that is delivering 1.8 billion vaccines. On the left side, uh, you see our role that we play in providing a solution to the semiconductor so shortage. I will not cover that a lot and I'll leave that to our next speaker from our distinguished research in organization IMEC to cover that topic. <clears throat> Moving on. So when we look at the, the global uh, value chain of semiconductors, uh, I don't need to, not need to tell you that there is a particular uh, focus in particular steps, uh, starting with the design, moving to fabrication, going to assembly uh, of the, the chip package, package as, uh, as a total. And all these uh, steps in the process have particular suppliers. So what I would like to do today for you is to give you a brief introduction, uh, which kind of industry references that we have, um, which kind of players in which part of the global value chain have a presence in Belgium and what do they do there? So when I overlay this, this um, figure of the global value chain with some of the key references, both the European one as the American ones, you come to the following image where in yellow, you see some of the key European players that have a presence in Belgium. And in gray, you see some of the key American players that have a presence in Belgium. So starting with uh, generating IP and knowledge uh, from IMEC, uh, going over software where we have cadence and synopsis present, uh, all the way to producing chips even, we have foundries present in Belgium as well. And uh, all the way to assembly, um, we have particular references that uh, give an, uh, an idea about the strength that we have in semiconductors. So for example, AMD, has a, a regional headquarters in our region and also Intel is present with uh, supercomputing as well as ON Semiconductor with uh, silicium production and wafer production. So in short, I think that the one thing I would like you to remember is in, in Belgium, in Flanders, there is a very high percentage of the global value chain present, perhaps with the exception of the assembly part, which is traditionally more done in, in Asia. So, but apart from that, we even have uh, equipment and tool providers that have ambitious presence in Belgium and we have material uh, providers as well. So these are the references from the industry side when you look at investors, but we also complement that with some homegrown chip design houses. And that is what we like to summarize as fabulous Flanders. Uh, I would like to, uh, give you a very boring enumerated list that is not exhaustive, but that is uh, giving you an idea about some of the design competences that we have. Uh, I group them in uh, technological uh, expertise and each of these uh, links is a particular design house present in Flanders. I invite you to take a closer look, look after this conference and to go over these companies. I'm pretty certain you will find a, a good partner for your research or your company um, in Flanders. So these are young companies varying from maybe a couple of employees all the way up to 350 employees that are headquartered in Flanders. You see that uh, on the digital and imaging side, there are uh, a number of companies, security, 5G, analog and communications, even the material side, we have young companies that grew into global presence and on photonics and design services as well. Uh, now, some of these young companies uh, at a certain moment are acquired by the bigger players. And that is particularly the case in the EDA software field, where we've seen a number of acquisitions, for example, by Synopsys or by <coughs> Cadence, and also Siemens acquired a company in Belgium that was active in this EDA field. So we consider that the best proof and the best testimony uh, that our people in Belgium are very uh, expert, very, very state of the art in what they do. And sometimes when they want to continue with their growth, they need to find shelter underneath the wings of a larger company. So please take a closer look at this list uh, and you'll definitely find a partner for your research. Many of these, by the way, grew out of academic research labs 
or applied research labs or even corporate spun outs. Um, so they're uh, very into research, although they're very commercial at the moment, they still publicize papers and they still collaborate highly in uh, the academic research field as well. When you combine those two, and when you combine the young, fabulous companies that we have, which is depicted here in yellow, with the foreign investors that we have, which is depicted here in gray, you come to a very high uh, dynamic of, um, of an ecosystem that is basically our strength in chip design and semiconductors. So these young companies that we grow uh, together with these uh, investors that have ambitious R&D teams and ambitious uh, commercial presence, they create a particular dynamic, which is the, the secret recipe for our success. And which is why Flanders as a region is considered to be in the top three in, uh, in Europe as a whole. Uh, in Belgium, in Flanders, we're very open and innovative in the way that we try to advance the state of the art. And the, the, the presence of all these foreign investors is a testimony to that. Now, to give you an idea, uh, the University City of Leuven, which is uh, on the center of my screen here, versus the University City of Ghent. If you take the distance between the, these two uh, cities, it's more or less the, the distance growing from Unicamp, where Professor Swart is, all the way to Sao Paulo. It's uh, a short drive, uh, um, depending on traffic, of course, but it's 70 miles um, to give you an idea. So all of this, all of these companies, all of these cities and universities are very close to each other. And even when you look uh, closely over the border and you look at uh, Germany, for example, the city of Aachen, where semiconductor companies like Ekstron are present, or you look at Eindhoven, which houses the, the largest technical university of the Netherlands, or you look at Lille, which is the largest student population in France. All of these, they also contribute to our ecosystem in Flanders. And we're very happy that we have all these neighboring cities of our neighboring countries uh, part of our ecosystem. Moving on, I would like to give you three examples. These, these were just logos and, and maps of Europe and, and maps of Flanders. But uh, as this conference is called Chip in the Field, I thought, okay, the name comes from Campinas, but maybe I can give you some examples of Flemish design chips that are in the field and that are in use. And I'll start with my, uh, my favorite personal uh, story here is that we have uh, a number of people and design houses in Flanders that are highly expert in CMOS image sensors. Uh, that team resulted out of IMAC a number of uh, decades ago. And uh, those companies that they created, they were acquired by companies like ON Semiconductor or by companies like Astro Microsystems. Now, when you look at the chip in the field, this is probably the best example I can give. This chip is on Mars at the moment, and it's not one chip, it's several different design chips in Belgium, in Flanders, that are currently on, Na on Mars in the NASA Perseverance rover. So you see an image of the 360 degree uh, Mars landscape in color here. That image was the first one to be transmitted earlier this year. Uh, back to earth and that was done by a Belgian image processing chip uh, developed by the CMOSIS team. Uh, CMOSIS that is now acquired by Austro Microsystem. So it's a, a global shutter kind of image sensor and it has a very wide field of view versus the more traditional 45 by 45. It has 90 degrees by 70 and uh, it's a number of sensors, 20 megapixels each. And by having five of them um, stitched together, you can create this high resolution view with very much detail uh, like you see on the screen. And that is not the only chip. There is another chip that is on uh, the NASA expedition on Mars, which was used for the landing in the final descent when the parachute dropped the rover. There was a camera pointed downwards to the Mars landscape that was also imaging and that helped to um, accurately position where the, the shoot was uh, versus the image of the landscape of Mars. So these two chips in the field in space are Flemish designed, Belgian made. We're very proud of that uh, when they touched down successfully on February 18th of this year. And finally, that's not the chip, but also the parachute was made by a Belgian company, Picanol. 
And uh, for the engineers among you in this parachute, there was a hidden message. Uh, and the hidden message you can see on the right, it says, there mighty things, uh, followed by the coordinates of the research organization, the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab here in California. So this is the first example. A second example is a, um, a company in Belgium that makes uh, automotive chips and sensors called Melexis. That is one of those young companies that grew to a global corporation. And currently, when you look at a, a car, it has on average 13 sensors from this Belgian company called Melexis. Uh, they were very early in um, making solutions for the electric vehicle market, and they have been highly successful in the last number of years. So this is a chip in a car that is Belgian, uh, made with, with international talent, of course, but the company is headquartered in Belgium. And the last example is a Belgian chip in this place or in projectors worldwide. In Belgium, we have a company called uh, Barco, headquartered in Kortrijk. It's a multinational company employing more than 4,000 people, including uh, a, a very ambitious presence in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. And they make high-end displays and high-end projectors. They're the world leader in that, especially when it comes down to digital cinema projectors. And they were the first to successfully commercialize a Texas Instruments DLP chip uh, for you that are uh, familiar with the technology. It's basically a chip full of tiny mirrors where every mirror is a pixel. And when you use these kind of chips, you have a very sharp image uh, that is being used in movie theaters, including in Brazil. And making those projectors, uh, you need a lot of chips around it, both uh, field programmer gate logic, but also ADC and DAC converters for all the cables and the, and the standards. And this Belgian company uh, was the first to successfully commercialize that. So when you're planning to go and see the, the James Bond movie soon, later this month in Brazil, the chances are 90% uh, that you'll be watching it on a Belgian projector and a Belgian screen there in Brazil. So that being said, I would like to uh, invite you to consider partnering with Europe, partnering with Flanders. Uh, we have a local office in, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, headed by Dirk and headed by Claudia for investment. And I included her contact details here. Please feel free to reach out. Even if it's research, even if it's, it's purely academic, we're here to help and to stimulate this relationship that we have. Uh, and with that being said, uh, I keep it to the time and I would like to uh, give the floor back to Professor Schwartz and to the next speaker, Paul Malise from IMEC. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Wim, for this nice overview about Flanders. Very interesting. Um, maybe we have some time, a few minutes for questions. If there are uh, any, please type on the chat. Uh, meanwhile, maybe I, I have a, one question is, you, you, you mentioned the shortage of uh, vaccine and of chips. Uh, is there also a shortage of engineers, designers? Are you aware of that? Good engineers are always hard to, to come by. Um, I think uh, it is as relevant in Brazil as it is in any other country in the world, and especially in the innovative hotspots that we consider ourselves to be part of. Um, I think uh, there is a high presence of talent available. Uh, people are very science and technology oriented in Belgium, which leads to a lot of students uh, graduating in those fields. Um, but for the right kind of company and the right kind of technology, I think any engineer or scientific profile is definitely very convincible to, to work for you. Uh, and even very mobile as well. We have seen Belgian talent uh, that uh, went to work uh, across the border to Eindhoven, for example, or that were lured into Silicon Valley here in the US. But after a number of years, they gain uh, invaluable experience and they bring it back to our ecosystem, which is why I mentioned that we're very open to other cultures and open to other languages and open to foreign talent because it's the secret of our success, being able to attract engineers, uh, to send out your own profiles and to get them back after a number of years. It's, I think the secret lies in the in and out flux of talents. Okay, thank you. Um... I don't see other questions. 
maybe Rafael, I use looking to the YouTube because I don't see the YouTube here. I couldn't enter. Uh, otherwise, we leave these questions for the end if there are, and then we go to the second. Uh, Jacobus, there yeah. is a question in the chat now. Uh, there are no questions in YouTube so far. Uh, question. How do you see the future of the industry with the new climate policies in Europe? So climate. Thank uh, you for the, the question, Eduardo. A very re relevant question indeed. So from the Flanders perspective, um, in our uh, outreach towards the world, we have uh, three priorities when it comes down to technology. Uh, and it's summarized as following. It's digital, it's health, and it's uh, green technology. So on these three fields, we're boosting our efforts to collaborate with other countries. And we're also doubling the amount of diplomats that we uh, dedicate to those fields. So climate is definitely a priority for Flanders, for Belgium and for Europe. And as you, as you know, most of the solutions that need to be energy efficient, they result in uh, using more and better chips and better design chips. So for me personally, I see this as a converging field uh, between semiconductor experience and between um, climate policies and so forth and ambitious to become greener. Um, I am very uh, hopeful that there will be more publicly uh, public R&D funding for both the green field as the semiconductor field in the nearby future for companies from Brazil to leverage upon when they consider an entity in Europe, for example. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Okay, so now I think, thank for your presentation and your answers, discussion. So with that